Welcome back to Cape Chronicle. Homelessness is a problem everywhere, even in communities big and small in southeast Missouri and southern Illinois. And new reports find that the number of children who are homeless is continuing to grow nationwide. We're joined now by Jamie Ludwig. She's a social worker at the Community Caring Council. Jamie, thank you so much for coming out to join us. Jacob, thank you. It's my pleasure. So what do we find as some of the, the, the causes of, of homelessness here in, in southeast Missouri and, and southern Illinois in our area? The biggest cause that we see as social workers in our area is mostly due to poverty. Um, just a lack of income that's coming in that can allow an individual or a family to sustain their housing. Other contributors can be mental health, substance abuse, um, but most of the time it can be due to economic reasons. I, I, as I mentioned earlier, I've seen, we've seen reports showing that um, the number of homeless children mm -hmm. is, is really in increasing nationwide. Is, is this something that we're seeing here as well? Well, so in 2013, the U.S. Department of Education and the Center for Family Homelessness did a study which found um, that 2.5 million children were homeless, and this was an increase from the year before. So that means that one in 30 children are experiencing homelessness at any time, and um, that is definitely happening at, at a local level as well. You know, I've, I've talked with some uh, school administrators in the past. You know, that it's, it's a real challenge for them because they have so many kids that bounce from, yes. from, from house to house, maybe from one family member or, or family friend to another. Um, it's not like they're out on the streets, but they don't have that stable home. Right, right. Um, is this what is this what you're what you're what you're seeing as, as well? Yeah, our experience with families, especially families with children in school, um, results in just a very transient existence. One night they may be at aunt's house, and then a few nights later they may be in somebody else's house. So um, you can see that that right there would affect a child's ability to do well in school because they don't know where they're going to be sleeping that night. Um, on a policy level, in I believe 1987, the, sorry, the McKinney Vento Act was established, and that was created to ensure that children that are in the situations that we're talking about um, are still guaranteed the best quality education that they can get, um, meaning that it's uninterrupted. So what that means is that each district in the United States has a homeless coordinator. And that individual's job is to make sure that those homeless children are enrolled in school, most importantly, but also accessing all of the school services in addition to state and federal mainstream services that would be available to them. Oh, what are some of the, the local services that are available to those, to, the, to those kids? Well, for example, the agency that I work for, the Community Caring Council, we have various housing programs, and those housing programs are intended to remove the family from those situations quickly, whether they be sleeping in their car, in a shelter, or bouncing place to place. And the intention is to rapidly rehouse them and get them into housing as soon as possible by providing them with rent supports, utility supports, and case management supports. Case management supports is mostly getting them connected to food stamps, um, Medicaid for the uninsured. And these are all things that are going to just increase their stability in, in their housing. I can, I can imagine that for, for kids, this, that type of situation um, has to make it very difficult to, to study mm -hmm. or, or socially at, at school it has to present some, some pretty big obstacles for them. Yeah, I would imagine that um, social issues with peers are, are the biggest thing. I would imagine that um, they feel very isolated compared to their peers. These are children that also just kind of blend in with the regular population. Parents are often afraid to communicate to the schools that they are having these problems. And so kids will continue to do the bouncing from place to place or reside in shelter where the school is just left um, unaware of their circumstances. 
and I believe that I shared with you a story of high school students that are working full-time jobs in the evening just to be able to maintain some sort of housing and, and going to school full-time and those are huge sacrifices that so many folks don't realize are happening uh, right here in our community. Does, does, does rural homelessness, r homelessness in small towns, um, does, does that look different from what we think of as, as more urban um, homelessness? Absolutely. I think when people think of a homeless individual, they, they have a certain picture that comes in mind, and it's often that picture that's portrayed through media. A single man living on the streets, often with a shopping cart or, or his various belongings. But rural homelessness does look different for, for several dis different reasons. Um, research indicates that people that live in rural areas are two-thirds likely um, to be p more poor than their urban counterparts. Um, you also find a lack of resources in rural areas. Transportation can be a problem. And most importantly, just a lack of affordable housing. Um, I, I believe that I read it takes um, a, making $14.07 an hour to maintain a two-bedroom apartment. And here in the state of Missouri, our minimum wage is $7.50. So right there you can see the huge difference um, in just people being able to keep up with, with their financial obligations. Are you, are you finding a little more attention being paid now towards the issue of uh, housing insecurity in, in, in rural areas? I think that we're starting to see more discussion at a federal level because it does look so different. Um, you know, when we go after grants, we're often competing with um, St. Louis, Kansas City, these larger metropolitan areas. And after so many years of that and advocates for rural homelessness, we're starting to get some attention um, to just indicate that, hey, homelessness looks a little bit differently for these folks. That doesn't mean that the factors are different, doesn't mean that the impact is different. It just means that it looks different for them and the obstacles can prevent, or I'm sorry, can cause various uh, barriers that they have to come through. We've been talking today with Jamie Ludwig. She's a social worker at the Community Caring Council. Jamie, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you. My pleasure.